Eight months into the campaign to retake Mosul, Iraqi forces now have ISIS surrounded in the old city. But the battle's hardly over. The fighters still have women and children, and the United Nations says they're using them as human shields. But in the Libyan port city of Sirt, which was the Islamic State's main stronghold outside of Iraq and Syria, a generation of widows and orphans speak to the brutality to come. Seb Walker reports. These women are among dozens of so-called ISIS brides held captive by the terror group during their final days inside Sirte. لما كنا في الحوش كنا يعني بنخرجوا نسمعوا في الاصوات الضرب والقصف يعني ينزل بس اما بعدين يعني عشناها رعب 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 نرقدوا على اصوات القصف على اصوات النيران نسمعوا في الناس يعني في ناس يعني تمشي في الطريق يضربها يضربها طيران حرار يعني تموت نسمعوا في صوتها لما تضرب كيفاش تعيط They are under investigation by Libyan authorities and are being held inside an air force base on the outskirts of Misrata. أنا لاجئة سورية في مخيم كلس وتعرفت على زوجي بتركيا وتجوزت بتركيا. They all hail from different countries and tell different stories about how they ended up there. Some of the women claim they simply followed their husbands to Libya with no knowledge they would end up joining ISIS. But others, like 18-year-old Ala Umamaya, appear to have more deliberate ties to ISIS. Ala left Egypt to live under a stricter form of Islam with her aunt in Sirte, and there she was married to an ISIS fighter. She says she tried to leave, but ISIS shot at her. Whatever their reasons for being insert, these women all say that when ISIS started to lose its grip on the city, they were used as collateral to slow down Libyan forces. I mean, what do you tell your children about their fathers? Nusaiba Um Yakin's children now live with her in-laws in Tripoli. But some of the women's children live in the prison with them. Across town, there's a group of children with no parents at all. All of them fathered by ISIS fighters, some as young as six months old. Hello, Shahada from Mosul. Hello. Hello. Yeah, Maryam from Libya. Hello, Maryam. This is Omar from Sudan. Libya's Red Crescent wasn't set up to take charge of these children. But they converted their headquarters into a makeshift orphanage after these girls and boys were rescued from Sirte. What, what, what happened to her foot? She was buried in the city. I saw her there in the city. And here. I saw her there in the city. And I said, I'm not going to go to the city. Is it painful for you? Medical staff here say when these 32 children arrived, many of them suffered from disease or dehydration, broken bones or burns. But it's their mental health that's the biggest concern. Islam? Islam? And your brother? 
Bilal. Can you remember what happened? How, how long have you been in this place? Abdul Salam and Bilal were rescued from the collapsed house during the operation to retake Sirk, along with five-year-old Mohammed, who lost his arm after it was crushed in the collapse. When Mohammed arrived, he needed 24-hour care and psychological treatment. He wouldn't speak for weeks and still barely utters a word. But his bond with Abdul Salam is clear. The boys take care of each other. A new family to replace the ones they lost. Do you, do you remember your father? Do you miss him? And when's the last time that you saw your, your parents? How do people here feel about them? I mean, are these children stigmatized because they are children of ISIS? كانت في الأول الناس كلها حاملة عليهم عرفي بس تو الناس قاعد تنسى إحنا هي نعمة من ربي النسيان فهمتها فالناس أصبحت تنسى يعني بحكم إنه أطفال هذي ما دخلوا شيء. What does the future hold for them? يوجد مستقبل لهم يعني إلا في حالة إن الدول بتاعها متبنتهم وخذتهم يعني والله في حد في حالة ما يقعدوا في ليبيا بيمشوا للدرعية فهمت كيف؟ these children have no documents or identification. A stateless generation founded under the caliphate. Now, with nowhere to go. <laughs>